Well, hello! How are you? So today we're going to talk about SNL analysis. SNL analysis. SNL analysis is a show that I do where I take down the jokes from Saturday Night Live and I break them down and I rate them 1 through 10 and I give them a grade each individually. Now, I want to let you know that this is one of the highest graded shows ever with a 97%. Woo the Rock did a lot of amazing things. Lord made a lot of amazing choices. It was revolutionary. It was amazing. It was refreshing. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful message to America. And you can tell, you can tell the love that Lorne has for America and for the craft itself in what was put together in this particular show. So I would bet to argue that this is one of the most iconic shows in American history. Yes. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, we're going to break down the rules. If they have hosted before, they get a negative point. So not for every time that they have hosted before, but just an automatic negative point if they have hosted before. So The Rock gets a negative one. Uh, now, the opening monologue, well, not the monologue, but the skit was Hallelujah, sung by the uh, Trump family and the Trump associates. Now, watch. I'm, by the way, I'm including the link at the bottom. You should definitely watch it. Now, at first, when I watched it, I was kind of like confused. I was like, wait, what? I was like, what? Wait, I don't understand. But then I saw a clip that a friend posted about Kate Middle, Kate, not Kate Middleton, but Kate, uh, I forget her last name, but about Kate doing uh, Hillary Clinton, and she was playing the piano and doing Sing Hallelujah after losing the election. So now having the Trumps on there, making that association to the previous skit that they had done before, in association, the whole, just the whole coming circle was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, and plus, because they had, uh, and because it was such a momentous moment, I give it a plus one. Like, there's sometimes an extra bonus point that I'll give for just, like, making that historical, bam, staple in society. So I give it a plus one for that. And then for the host, for the guest appearance, I'm not going to let you know who the guest appearance was. Um, I'm going to give it another plus one. So right off the bat, we're kicking off with a 12, with a 12. So then we've got the monologue. The monologue was, again, a plus one because of the social rippling effect. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment and say, particularly to The Rock, if this is a joke, and if, to Tom Hanks, if this is a joke and you're not going to run in 2020, I will probably never watch either one of your movies. <laughs> That's... Because, and the reason why I say that is because we are in a moment of American history where a lot of us really feel the pain of what has happened. And to make this joke, oh, well, if it's, I mean, it's a joke, may, you know, to make this as just a joke, it just would be extremely painful because we love The Rock, because we love Tom Hanks. And because I think what's interesting about this Trump thing is that it has said presidents will open up the doors for every single human being to go in like, I want to be a president, I want to be a president, I'm a celebrity. And then the question becomes, can they be president with the context of what we're having? I mean, it's a whole long discussion. I personally believe that The Rock and Tom Hanks love America and they can pick a cast and cabinet of people that can make amazing choices and, and, and surround themselves with really amazing, amazing people. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I think so. So that's a whole different point. So I give him a, another plus two. So we've got a 12 and another 12 because Tom Hanks, of course, you know, guest stars. Uh, so for every guest star that comes in, you get an extra point. So they've got two 12. Bam, bam. Knocking them out of the park. Then we've got uh, the wrestler. The wrestler situation. The Cartier. We're, I think it went into the Cartier. I forget. But the Cartier commercial was a nine. And the reason why I give the Cartier beef one to ten is, you know, I give it a nine was because the end was lackluster. I think it played on various different elements of um, what's going on in society with the widget thing and also with the Trump situation and the rich and, and the poor and the, the, the division between that it, to a certain degree. And I think what was nine, I, I just felt that the not, it could have just, there was something that could have been just brought to a whole different level at the end. I think you have always have to go with that. Bam! And the whole, you know, it just, I'm not going to reveal it because you got to watch it. It just, something more could have been brought in. Then we've got The Wrestler. I give that one a nine again. And the reason why I gave it a nine is because it's an old skit that has been done before and I've seen it. Uh, the writing is new. Um, 
you know, but I give it a nine because it was old, but it was fresh. Like they brought a really new, fresh element to it. Now the Coco character, um, I th was it Bobby Moynihan playing the other character again in the previous skit? I don't know. I don't know. And, and could other people come in? Could that be Coco's thing about how he goes in? I don't know. But you watch the skit; it's funny. The rent, but a not again a nine because it was old. It wasn't. It's not like the Californians. It's not you know where the Californians. It's like the Californians, and it's like a thing onto itself. This is Coco, and it doesn't have an opening, and it just it's kind of like the thing. You know, if it had an opening, maybe you know I don't know. Then we've got the rap. It's basically you got to go all out or don't go all out. I don't know. Uh, the rap was amazing. The rap was just one joke after another. Bah, 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 bah. Another rap, but the song, the hip hop mix that they were doing, and bringing everybody, <laughs> and it was just, it just popped each other. Every joke was just super hilarious. And when you have all the cast members on there, you know, I would even throw in like some random people. Like I don't know, I don't know. It just, it was beautiful. I say do it again. Um. You know, I, I, it's one of those things where I think that it could be done again and it would be wonderful. Uh, we've got, uh, but the, my only concern was that Katy Perry played Katy Perry. Now I think Carrie, that was an opportunity for Katy Perry to come in and, and, and be like a whole different character and, and whatnot and have fun with it. But Katy Perry playing Katy Perry, I think that, you know, um, now we've got Scorpio, which was EJL. EJL stands for Every Joke Landed. Um, Scorpio was a 10. It was just bop, 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 bop. It was just all building. It was all beautiful. It was every character in it was just separated in its own way to, to define itself. And yet Scorpio was, there. it was just, it was, it was an amazing, it was hilarious. I think again, they should bring in, see, these are the things where like, like Scorpio had its intro so that you can bring in Scorpio again as a thing. Whereas the, the Coco wrestler, it's like, you're not sure. It's like, I think I've seen this before. I'm not, you know, there needs to be like, yes, you've seen this before and now we're building on it or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> then we've got the tracks ad. That was a 10. That was an absolute 10. That was hilarious. Again, at EJL, every joke landed. It was just bah, 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 building on it. It was just, and by the end, you were like, oh my gosh, stop, stop, rock, stop. It's like when someone's like tickling you, you're laughing too so hard, you know, through the internet. It was just, it was beautiful. I watched it twice, by the way. Weekend Update was a 10, an absolute 10. Uh, uh, Vanessa Bayer, Abby, just like, I, I know she's leaving. I want to give extra shout outs towards the end to the cast members that are leaving, that I believe are leaving because that's who showed up in the skits. Um, the, I'll let you know. So, uh, Weekend Update, I mean, Vanessa Bayer, oh my gosh. And Drunk Uncle, oh my. <laughs> Drunk Uncle needs to be a movie onto itself. Like drunk, if like Lauren is like I know, like we're the cone we're the cone heads and some other SNL uh, movies. But I think that <laughs> Ladies, that was amazing, right? At the box office, uh, <laughs> it was gonna. He Never mind. I'll stop right there. Um, amazing, amazing actor. Uh, so. You're being a little tricky. I'm like, yes, I am. Uh, so, okay, so back to the show, back to the show. Drunk Uncle, amazing, amazing, amazing. Everybody loves Drunk Uncle. Everybody loves Drunk Uncle. The reason why is because Drunk Uncle says what certain people are saying. And it's like, you know, sometimes people tend to want to hide and be like, hmm, no, Jeff Sessions isn't the racist, you know. <laughs> but you can, we all know, and having Drunk Uncle be its refreshing. So, Drunk Uncle movie. Uh, then there was the, the fart joke. Uh, it was slow at first. Uh, and when I watched it again, I was like, oh, okay. I see the foreshadowings. Uh, it was a revitalized... I gave it a 10. It was a revitalized... Okay, and I'm not a big fan of, like, fart jokes and all these kind of things. But it revitalized the whole joke to where you're like, I'm not... I want to hear more fart jokes now. Like, it just refreshed it in a whole new avenue. And kudos to Saturday Night Live to doing that. The evil... The evil castle, the evil in the white castle. <laughs> I, I look it up on the thing. It, I give it an eight. And the reason why I gave it an eight was the reveal, beautiful. 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 The reveal was absolutely iconic. And there's a moment where the reveal could have been tied into the another skit later. But we'll talk about that later. The reveal was beautiful. 
Um, but my problem was going into the White Castle. It, that's a big issue. Like, you got to deal with it. You got to, like, Bobby's got to say something or someone's got to say something about it. that's wrong, you know, and then moving on to the White Castle, you know, like somewhere there's got to be some kind of transition going from that to White Castle was just like, no, <laughs> no, I don't think that I can agree to that. Uh, right now, I think I need a transition or I need, I think something and even omitting the whole White Castle thing. You know, to me, when the White Castle thing came in, it was just like, oh, no, 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 no. There has to be. It just, it didn't, it didn't land for me completely. But up until the review, after the reveal was, and even at, at trickles after the reveal was just beautiful. But just after, you can tell, you didn't know. The Wingman was a 9. And uh, the reason why I give the Wingman a 9, it was, it was hilarious. Every joke landed. Totally agree. Was because the again the ending was lackluster. It wasn't completely there. I think that if they had brought in, if you guys had brought in Kate's uh, character, the one the lady that kisses everybody like before midnight, you know, before the bar closes, and you're like midnight. That's when your bar closes. It's like I know it's in New York. Um, so the lady who kisses that goes home with the guy, bringing her in and having you know like that whole element. I think that would have been like oh. My God. We know her. You know, anytime you can do something like that in other skits. Now, the senior skits, I gave it a nine. And the reason why I gave it a nine is because the evil doctor could have been brought in into the senior's character with the same wig. Like, The Rock didn't need to change his wig, and he could have worn the thing, taken off the coat, and just had that outfit and played the character from the seniors. And the reason why that is because there's creepy elements that the Rock's character fall, goes through in that. And then even bringing in the robot at the end, like waving like, hey, I'm a friendly robot. That could have been just like, oh my lord. That that just the factor that you're doing a callback to a previous skit and that that's the guy from the thing. Like that's even building on a movie. Like that you're literally starting to build on, on a character that could that when the rock hosts again, I know the rock is gonna host again. Um could be built on. So yeah, so that's it. I wanna give special shout outs to Vanessa Bay. I, I, I'm I'm heartbroken because I literally when I'm watching the show I'm thinking to myself, these are the notes that I was giving to Vanessa Bear particularly. Like what I was gonna give to Vanessa Bear was saying Girl, put on masks, put on, like, little, there's a little, there's a little stiffness about the Nesimera, which I, we love, which is the whole element that we love, which, interestingly enough, could really, the Nesimera really is in a beautiful moment where she could branch off and, like, get an Oscar for a dramatic role, or she could branch off and, like, bunch of do comedy, like, franchises of comedies. Uh, so I think that she's in a really beautiful state where she can play with putting on face makeup, Hosting, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, not hosting, because RuPaul's like, wait, hosting? Uh, being a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. Those kind of things, you know, and then just playing with those, with the variety of, of her face and just changing it and seeing what she can do. She is, there's something really amazing with Vanessa Bear. Um, and I don't think that we've seen, uh, that whole, like, her and different face makeups and, as much as we would like to. And just opening her up to a whole new possibility. But again, Vanessa, I mean, like I said, I, I could see Vanessa Mayer walking up and being like getting an Oscar as well. Because you could see that there's a spark of that dramatic element and understanding. So Vanessa Mayer, I love you. Beck Bennett, Beck Bennett was one of those people that at first I was kind of like, ugh, like who is this guy? And as the seasons grew, <laughs> as we, the characters grew, uh, you know, uh, man baby, uh, it just, as, as, as all those things started to evolve, it was just became more, I loved Beck Batman. I think we all are going to miss Beck Batman. I think really to me, to be honest with you, it was a kind of a surprise. Like it was a surprise. Now I'm not sure if Beck Batman is leaving, <laughs> even though he was in the skit. Uh, clarified in the comment section down before. Bobby Moynihan, I believe, is leaving. I love, I mean, Drunk Uncle. Drunk Uncle, you know, and just Bobby Moynihan is just a staple. He's just an amazing, amazing human being and has, like, given so much light to humanity and so, like, like, when I think about all the various different characters that Bobby Moynihan 
has given us and faces and faces that Bobby Moynihan has given us. I think it's that Fred Armisen element. If you see my Twitter, you know, I love me some Fred. I met Fred once. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, I'm glad my knees didn't belt. I wasn't belt. See, I even talking about Fred. I can't speak. So, uh, and then Kyle Mooney. Kyle Mooney. Kyle Mooney has stepped up in a lot of different elements. That awkward, weird, you know, quirkiness that he comes in and and I think that again we're gonna miss Kyle Mooney. You know, and it just, uh, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting as the people come in and as the people come out. You know, and who's there and who's not. And so last words that I know this has been a really long episode because it's like you know the season finale. Last words. My questions are. I don't understand why people haven't done a documentary about Lord Michaels and the magnitude of power that Lord Michaels is. Uh, you know, like Loving Lorne or Love Lorne. That would be an interesting title where, you know, cast members of Saturday Night Live are interviewed about Lord Michaels and who he is and his family and, and friends and stuff like that. And they're interviewed about the power and the magnitude. And fans are interviewed about Lorne Michaels and Saturday Night Live and what they've, how they've loved. I think that that's the kind of movie that America would totally go see and even buy and put in their shelves and be like, that's it, yeah, you're right. I think, Lord, I, like, when I look at the landscape of America and I think I think of the gods of comedy that, that we praise to to a certain degree, I think Lord Michaels really is up there as one of the deities of comedy or humanity. And, I, and the gifts that, that Lord has given us, it's just... I mean, I like when I watched this particular episode twice, you know, and um, just my love for the craft and my love for the ability of comedy and what a comedy can do and shift and and having the media, having Saturday Night Live be the opening. I mean, the open. It just your create your iconic moments, iconic moments. That's what's so beautiful about uh, what's happening right now. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? And by the way, The Rock, you better run for president because that could be the most insulting joke ever or the most beautiful thing ever. Because I know I will vote for you. You already got my vote. Do you have Rock's vote? Do you have... Well, do you, I know that you have Rock's vote because The Rock loves America. But does Rock have your vote? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful year. Take care.